Hello, welcome to my Patreon tutorial on how to draw a superb fairy wren. Now in this picture I started by doing an airbrush background. I don't have the video footage for that, but all I did was um, put down a layer of colour, then used a stencil to go over with darker colours to get the leafy look in the background. In order to protect the area that I want to use for coloured pencil, of I put a layer of masking fluid down over that, over the bird and the branch, and then it, I just rubbed it off with my fingers after I'd finished airbrushing. Now for the eye, what I've done is I've put a little bit of the luminance white pencil down on the highlight to keep that nice and bright, and then I've gone over with my black pencil, blocking in the pupil and the little um, the ring around it, I've made sure to leave that light. So I haven't covered that over with the black pencil. And I'm just doing little tiny strokes to get the feathery look. Uh, it'll end up quite dark in this area, so it won't be as noticeable. But I find that even when it is a dark area, if you put in that texture when you're doing the pencil strokes, it definitely makes the picture look better because you can see the light texture. And just going over to where the beak is and sketching it in. My lines were very faint, so I had a little bit of trouble um, knowing exactly where my lines were in um, compared to the reference photo. But I just had to keep a close eye on the reference photo as I drew. Just using a light pressure with the black, not too much, um, not too hard, don't want to burnish it. And making sure the pencil is nice and sharp to get that fine line along the beak. You see with the pencil, I'm often rotating it. When I want it to stay sharp, I'll rotate it every few moments in my hand, just like there, just to keep the tip nice and sharp. And that helps so you don't have to keep going back and sharpening it with the pencil sharpener. If you keep rotating it, then you don't end up with a flat edge on the tip. Just getting in some of the shadowed areas on the blue part on the top of the head of the bird. I'm just using tiny little strokes to get that feathery look. And then going over with the helio blue reddish. Um, just doing light pressure and putting a layer of that down onto that area. And that's the main blue colour I've used for this whole bird is the helio blue reddish. And then using the middle phthalo blue to get some of those darker shadowed areas in and getting a little bit of the texture in on the feathers. I'm just using tiny little strokes. And because of this artwork of um, airbrushed the background, it made it a lot quicker than having to draw that background in. So made this artwork quite quick to finish. That meant that I can have this slowed down so that you can actually spot it in real time. Or oh, almost real time. And then just a moment ago, I did go over the black with uh, blue just to give that black a bit more depth and rather than having a flat black. And then using cold grey three to, on the beak and just getting that colour layer down. I'm using a really tiny brush now to blend out the colours. I'm using a size zero 
Taclon Filbert brush and this one I find quite good for this sort of blending. The tip doesn't actually hold much um, solvent so you don't have to uh, wipe the excess off too much. And then I've switched over to a larger filbert, a size 4, just to go over the feathers. The smaller one's really good for detailed work around like the eye and the beak as well. And with the blending that was, I used Art Spectrum Edelis Solvent and I just dip the brush in and then wipe the excess off before uh, blending it on the paper. Now just using the Luminance White Pencil to get the, that highlight around the eye again, which I lost in that last layer with the grey. And as you can see, the white Luminance Pencil does a really good job of getting that white to show up again. I'm just using a very sharp black pencil to get the detail around the eye. I'm going over the beak area again and those little tiny feathers. Just using tiny strokes to get that texture. Adding those shadows back into the head area, the forehead. When I blended it, sometimes um, the colours fade a bit, especially with black when you've got layers on top of it. But because I'm doing light layers, then it doesn't matter because you can just add more layers on top. And that's a good thing with doing light layers. You can keep adding on top. Putting a little bit of that blue in on the beak as well to add a little bit of colour on the beak instead of it just being a flat grey. Adding more texture with the little phthalo blue. Add little highlights all over the place with the white luminance pencil. You can see how I did it around the beak and just put a little line there and you can, it's a good way of showing that edge between the beak and the feathers next to it. Especially on a bird like this where it's quite dark in that spot. I'm just finishing off the last little blue part on the forehead. I'm just doing what I did before with layering the two blues. I'm using the darker blue to get a little bit of the texture in on the light blue. And then just blending it all out again. going over that area just to make it that blue a little bit more vibrant sometimes it gets a little bit washed out when you do like white over the top you just need to add a little bit more of that richer blue color in this area I'm blocking in quite roughly with the black uh, on the back of the head the bird didn't have as much um, detail uh, it blurred slightly so I haven't stressed about getting the um, texture right with the base layer I'm just going over the top just making blocking in the color where I need it I'll go over in a moment and add the texture I am using a slightly harder pressure with the black in this area I'm just going over the whole area. I'm 
with this section, um, do watch where you're going um, with the reference photo. You don't want to cover an area with black that you don't want black because black is very hard to lighten. And going over the black with the middle phthalo blue. And just making sure that it's not just a flat black. It always looks a little bit better when it's got another colour with it. And just blending that all out. When it comes to black, sometimes you only need to do one lot of layering and, and blending, um, depending on the pressure that you use. And other times, if you, you you'll need to do another layer to get it uh, dark enough. And sometimes it's like too much of the white paper might show through, so you'll have to do another lot of layers of black. But in this case, that was all I needed to get the dark layer down. And I'm going over the black with cold grey too and just doing little lines, not really focused on feather shapes, just making sure that they're going all in the right direction um, just to give it that effect of a texture so it's not just flat black, it's, it's got texture in the black. This bird has very tiny feathers, so it's, you don't really need to focus too much on getting the feathers looking right, um, like looking like long feathers, because they're very tiny. So you just little dashes, little lines, or are good enough to get the effect of feathers. And sometimes that's all you need to do when it comes to artwork. You don't actually have to draw everything how you'd think that look, you just draw what you see and often they're just little lines and they go together to make the texture that you want. Now just put down a layer of the halo blue reddish and then going over with the middle phthalo blue. I'm just doing the same as I did on the top of the head. I'm just getting in those shadows. This area has more distinctive feather Feather shapes, um, they, they've got little tiny ones around the eyes and then little, larger ones a little bit back, but they're still very tiny feathers. And there I realised that the shape I'd drawn was not quite right for the reference photo. It's not a mistake that people would look at the bird and think, oh, that's not right. But I just wanted to look a little bit closer to what the feathers look like on the reference photo. I'm just blending that out. And I'm just using my Derwent eraser to lighten that spot up there. Yeah, I wanted it blue, not black. I'd done it a little bit further down when I'd done it before, which is why I coloured in that section of black and then just added the blue bit in then. So even when you are following a reference photo, it, you can still make mistakes. And it's just a matter of working out how to fix them. And making sure that the black pencil is nice and sharp for this section on those little feathers. Not too much black on that area because you do want it still to be mostly blue. And blending it all out. Make sure not to have too much of the solvent on your brush when you blend because otherwise it'll move too much pigment around and it'll end up looking more splotchy. At least with um, feathers, you, you're not stressing about it having to be a smooth look. It can be a little bit splotchy without too much worry.
just using the white luminous pencil to add the highlights in around the eye. I'm just doing little dashes again. The good thing with the luminance white is you can actually put it down and then go over it with another colour too. And you can still see the white, but it makes the colour that you go over it just a little bit more brighter. With the luminance white pencil, I have to rotate it quite a lot to keep it having that sharp point. It's a lot softer lead than the polychromos has, which means that way if you want to keep that point sharp, you have to rotate it quite a lot. And blocking in the next row of blue feathers. I love this bird. I am. Um, Spent countless hours as a kid watching these birds uh, popping around in the grass. They're such beautiful birds. They're such interesting character. They just jump around. They don't fly so much. They just hop from branch to branch. And this is just a repeat of what I did with the other feathers. It's just blocking in the bottom layers and then blending and then going over it again to further define the colour and the feathers. not doing too much with the white pencil on this section. I want those feathers to be darker. Now just blocking in the next area of black. Again with the middle potato blue over the black. I usually when I do block in black, I'd like to do a layer of black, then a layer of a different colour, and then black again. And I find that when that blends out, it looks quite good. Again with the cold grey too, just adding the little texture on the black. And definitely with birds, watch um, your reference photo closely to see where the what the direction of the feathers are. Especially around the face, they go in several different directions. Um, they go up a bit and then they go down. You know, watch the reference photo to see what direction they're going. Even in the black area, you need to watch where you're doing the with the cold grey. You want to make sure that that is the feathers there, the texture's going in the right direction. I'm just repeating. Um, I did with the other black areas on this area, just layering the black and the blue together. And then blending it out after I've done that. I do go over a little bit with the yellow blue reddish just to brighten up that area on those feather stripes just a little bit more. I always find that I go back and adjust 
other areas um, once I've blocked in colours it changes how it looks sometimes when it's up against the white as against as opposed to being against the colour that it's supposed to be. And just blending it out. I'm just adding a bit of definition to those feathers along the bottom of that blue area. In with this particular bird, it has quite distinct little feathers down there. Um, they have quite dark shadows in between each of the feathers, so that's why I'm using the black on that. Otherwise, I'd probably use a color that was just a darker version of the color of the feather. I'm just adding a little bit of white to add a bit more shine to it. And I've already gone over this area with white, but then sometimes when you add extra layers, it, you lose that little bit of the white, so you do it again. And sometimes it's hard to tell how much white to add until You've got the colours all blocked in around it. I'm just using the cold grey too to add a bit more texture to the black area. And then this little so it had a little bit of feathering along the edge. It wasn't quite a smooth edge, so I've just had a little bit. Not too much. You don't want it to look fluffy, but just enough to add, make it so that the line's not completely smooth. Just darkening the, the area up a little bit with the black. I'm just doing a very light layer there, not too much. Sometimes when you've done two areas, you can tell that they've been done separately. So going over the whole area with one colour can help, like I did then with the black, joining those two black areas together. Now onto the tail. I'm just lightly blocking in with the black um, the feather lines in the tail and definitely watch your reference photo with these this area just seeing how those feathers go they, they don't all go completely straight. Some of them have got a little bit of a curve. Now going over with the yellow blue reddish, just adding a blue onto the top of the tail. And again with the middle of the tail blue as well. Now going over with cold grey three just to make it darker. And this bird has blue on the top part of the tail and not the bottom. It has a very light grey there. I'm just blending those colours out. And blending it's good just to get rid of the white flecks in the paper. That's why I like to blend. When you put down the base layers and you blend it out with the 
solvent. It helps it, you lose those little speckles of the paper. And that's gone over with black again to darken those lines. Another layer of the blue. I don't want to do too much blue because it's only a faint touch of blue on the, the tail. It's not like on the head where it's very distinctive blue. I'm using the white luminance pencil to add in the white highlights on the tail. Um, with this one, the white was on the light highlighted areas on the bottom line of the tail feathers, not on the top. Now for this next section, I've used an etching tool and I've seen this technique used by other artists so I thought I'd try it out because there's a lot of very fine hair lines in this part of the bird, our feather lines. And um, I definitely think I need a bit more practice with it. <laughs> it didn't quite work out how I was expecting. But pretty much what I did was I went over this whole area with the etching tool. I think I might need to use a slightly larger etching tool. And um, this one's a very fine tip. Um, but when I found, I found that when I blended it, I lost a lot of the lines that I'd made. Um, so I definitely need a bit more practice with this technique. But that's all about art. You try different things and see how it goes. I also found it a little bit difficult with this type of etching because I couldn't actually see what I was doing really. I was just going over the paper and you could see the lines if you looked on a different angle, but it's a bit hard to see what you're doing. I've seen some really gorgeous artwork with using this technique, so I definitely want to practice it a bit more and see how you go. I think I might have used too much um, solvent on my brush when I was blending because you've got to try and not let the colour pencil go into those lines, but that's what the solvent does. It pushes the pencil into the little grooves in the paper. So here I'm just going over with the cold grey three. And just blocking in the darker areas on the wing. This part of the bird is very light grey. Um, it's quite a contrast to the head where it's all black and dark blue. Even though I've already put all the lines down with the, the grey, I'm still doing little strokes and and keeping it in line with where the feathers are going, making sure the pencil stroke is right, the direction of the pencil lines is going the right way with the feathers. And here I'm just blocking in with cold grey two over the whole area, just to get that layer of colour down. And you can see some of the lines there that I've etched in place. I'm adding some more shadows in with the black now. Now, um, onto the blending of it. Didn't have any blender on my brush then, just grabbed it. <laughs> Whoops. Um, getting some blender on the brush now. And as you can see, as I'm blending it, the lines are getting filled in instead of remaining. You can see them a little bit, but not 
that's not what I'd seen with other artists where the lines looked really good. So as with everything, you do a layer of um, texture and the effect, you can see the effect in the final piece. It all adds to it. I'm trying to blend it with a little bit less of solvent on the brush, but it's still a bit difficult. <laughs> Darkening up some areas with the Code Grey 3. In this section, the feathers are pretty much going in all different directions. Um, they're a little bit crazy on this part of the bird. <laughs> so you'll see the pencil marks that I do go all over the place. Just using the white luminance to get the edge of, of the wing lines in. And along the wing, they have a line of white and then a line of grey to get the, those feather lines in. And here I've gone back over the other area, adding white lines in with the luminous pencil because they weren't really showing up where the etched lines were. You can see them a little bit, but not as much as I thought they would. I just, just need to practice it a bit more. <laughs> I'm using a bit of the grey around the edge. I find when you use an airbrush background, sometimes you can end up with a harsh edge. Just using the grey to soften that a little bit. On the bird, the chest area was a lot lighter on the very edge, whereas I've added that grey to soften the edge of the of the bird to the airbrushed area. I'm just adding a bit more texture with the cold grey three. Just darkening it up. And these strokes are a bit longer than the other areas on the bird because they've got longer feathers around the chest area or the tummy area. And just blending that out again and getting all those greys to go well together and into the um look a little bit more smoother. Now with the black pencil I'm just adding adding a little feather effect along the edge of the black area. Just so it's not just a sharp line between the black and the grey. I just want to add a little bit of feathering, little tiny line. And just blending those just a little tiny bit, not too much, just want to soften them a little bit so that those lines weren't completely sharp. I'm just adding some more shadows under the wing and on the wing as well.
as you can see, the feathers are going in all sorts of directions here. And just look at the reference photos, see what they're doing. But at the same time, because they're really messy, don't stress too much if they're not exactly in the right spot. With this bird, they get all fluffy and go have those feathers going in all sorts of directions. I'm just blending out those shadows a little bit so that they're not quite so harsh. I'm going over with the luminance pencil just to make some of those white lines, the feather lines, a little bit brighter. And just also making sure that you can tell that the fence are going in all sorts of directions, not just all one way. There, I needed a slightly harder point than what the luminance pencil was giving me, so I've switched to the polychrome light. And while it's not quite as opaque as the luminance, it still does a good job, especially when you need a sharp point. The only problem with the luminance pencil is it's hard to keep it really sharp so that you can get that fine line, which the polychrome light does really well. Now onto the feet. Uh, the reference photo wasn't very clear on what the feet were doing in this picture. The, it wasn't, didn't have very good detail on the feet. So a lot of this was a bit of guesswork for me, especially where the toes were going. So what I've put in the white um, polychromous pencil along the edge of the um, legs because they had a white highlight there. And then I've used the cold gray and then the black to add the colour on the leg. And now I'm using the black to sketch in where the toes are and trying to make sense of what the photo is showing me. I'm just going over it with the cold grey three. And now of, I'm using uh, Put mortem to add a little bit of brown into the leg. This bird does uh, does have a bit of colour on the leg, so it's not just grey. Now onto the other leg and just blocking in the black. a bit rough with my sketching because I'm trying to figure out what what is what with these feet while I'm drawing them in because my lines weren't helping in my photos. The photo did not have much detail at all. Again, just added a bit more of the foot mortem and then now the cold grey three. Now just blending out that again. And when I um, dip my brush in the bottle of um, solvent, I usually wipe the edge of the brush on the edge of the bottle. Um, do be careful if you do that because it will put pigment that's on the brush into the bottle. Um, so I use a smaller bottle that I pour from my large bottle of solvent into to um, stop it from getting that pigment all in the big bottle and keeping it clean. The first bottle I had, I made the mistake of not doing that and <laughs> it um, ended up a dirty grey colour, which is fine if you're using it on um, dark areas, but as soon as you're trying to do 
a light area, it, it you can that pigment actually does show up a little bit. So yeah, so if you don't have a spare bottle, you can just use paper towel to wipe the brush with. I'm just adding in a little bit more highlights with the when it's white. And just going over with the white polychrome stuff just to make it a little bit lighter. You can see I add a little bit of texture on that black area. And now onto the branch. But for this one, I wasn't too stressed about where I was adding the colours, the black shadows. I did have lines roughly drawn on the paper um, but when I've done use the uh, masking fluid it actually lifted quite a few of my lines off which I wasn't expecting um, but it's with branches you just get the general look right you don't have to stress about where every little crevice in the bark is for this one all the bark is going in a general the same sort of direction so I made sure to keep all my lines going in that direction and had to position my hand in a way that it the pencil strokes all went the same way. I'm just loosely blocking in with the black pencil where all the shadows are. As you can see, I'm being very messy with this. I'm not keeping my strokes nice and even. Bark is a very rough texture, so you can get away with been quite messy with it. Now I'm using the cold grey three and just putting a layer over the whole branch and that is going to be the lightest colour of the branch. I'm not being too careful with this one, I'm just doing a nice light layer and keeping it even across the whole branch. You'll notice I went over the feet a little bit there too, I wasn't being too careful on keeping them and going around them. And then I was using Kaput Morton to add a bit of dark to the branch and a bit of brown and the branch in the refer reference photo was very brown and so I started off adding that but then you'll see soon that I switched to greens to tone it down a bit and here I'm using Seguin just to add that lighter brown colour in. And just doing a little bit of walnut brown over the top as well. Not too much. Just doing very light layers over the whole area with these colours. Now I'll start adding some of the greens in. This one is earth green. It's a nice grey green. I'm just using it to tone down the browns a bit. Because after I looked at it, I was like, oh no, that, that brown not going to work as well as being that bright with the background. It 
did in the reference photo, but not so much in this particular artwork because of the background being so uh, blue green. So I just used a uh, light phthalo green then and just add a little bit of touch of that and then blending it out now. I wasn't too stressed about how much uh, solvent was on the brush for blending this bit just because um, it doesn't matter if it, this area goes splotchy at all because of the texture of the bark. And as you see, I switched over to a large brush, which makes the blending just a bit easier. This one's a size 8 filbert. The, the three brushes I use for blending, the size 0 for very fine detail, the size 4, which is my main go-to brush, and then uh, the size 8 filbert for the, uh, usually on backgrounds and areas where you don't need much detail and it doesn't matter if everything sort of gets smudged together. Um, the larger brushes do hold a lot of the solvent though so you do have to be a bit more wary of um, getting the excess off especially if you want the area smooth but in this area it wasn't too bad because the texture it doesn't matter if it's a bit splotchy. Now, just coming back with the pencils again to further define um, the edges and the shadows with the black. And when you have used a lot of solvent, sometimes you have to wait a moment for it to the paper to dry before you come back over it with pencils. Just bear that in mind, especially then with the branch where I would actually use quite a fair bit of solvent because I was using the larger brush. As you can see, I'm being very messy with my pencil strokes, adding in the shadow on the bottom of the branch there. Not too deep a shadow, just enough so, so you can see that one side's darker than the other. I'm going over with the earth green again. I decided at this point that I wanted it over most of the pitch of the log, not just on certain bits. So I was quite um, loose with it. I put it pretty much everywhere on the branch. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not being very particularly neat with any of these pencil strokes. As long as the general direction is going in the direction of the branch, that's pretty much all you need. I'm just adding some of the light phthalo green. And then I'm also going over the bird a little bit and adding a little bit of the green in on the bird. Just a touch so that you've got some of the colours from the background coming in onto the bird and the branch. And that's what sort of ties the background to the bird. You want those colors reflected in not just the background, but in the subject as well and the foreground. And just blending that out again. And if you can see the um, 
how much solvent I've got on the brush is definitely making that a little bit splotchy. But as I said, with the branch, the bark texture, it doesn't matter. As you can see with um, my blending um, further up, I was definitely keeping my strokes in line with the branch, the bark as well, so that when it did uh, splotch it, the splotches went in the right direction. Now just going over with the deep cobalt green now and just darkening those shadowed areas and adding green into them. The branch definitely did not look like the one in the reference photo by the time I finished adding all the green to it. It was a very light brown colour, pretty much like this saguane colour all over it. But yeah, I just left a hint of it at the top, but the rest of it I made green. At this point, because I'm not following the reference photo, I'm just layering until I'm happy with it. I just keep adding colours, keep going until it looks the way I want it to. Adding a little bit of white to make some of the branch uh, texture stand out a little bit, but not too much. You didn't want to go overboard with the white on the on the branch. See, I'm using the uh, polychromos white for this one, and you can see how well it actually does go down over dark colours. It's not as white as the luminance, but it definitely does a good job. I'm just using the earth green to tone down some of those white marks that I did. You just don't want them all, all to be bright white. Another layer of blending. Adding a little bit more texture with the walnut brown, just sharpening up the, the edge on those little bits of bark sticking out. Sharpening up that edge along where the airbrush was against the branch. And that's it for this picture of a superb fairy wren. I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.